Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly TV devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. For more than 150 years, Redemptorist missionaries all over the world have been entrusted with the responsibility of guiding and encouraging this wonderful devotion. In the Philippines, where this devotion is especially strong, Mary is known with great affection, simply as Mama Mary. Here in Canada, we gather every week in downtown Toronto at St. Patrick's Parish and the Shrine of Our Mother of Perpetual Health. And for more than 25 years, we have invited you to join us on TV every week for prayer, song, and reflection in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. And now, you can also find this weekly program online on our companion website, www.redemptress.tv. Perpetual Health is in that what we need and so many times are afraid to ask. Perhaps today, we are feeling a bit alone in our homes, apartments, hospitals, and nursing homes. Who really cares about us? How do we solve the problems that comes to us every day? Yet, we know from experience that when we gaze upon this most familiar picture of our Mother of Perpetual Health today, we are not alone. Joining us today are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our Mother of Perpetual Health. From around the world, the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Ireland, and Australia. From the Americas, including more than 100 parishes in Canada, also the United States, Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. All of us together, in our millions, are praying to our Mother of Perpetual Health. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking the intercession of Mary for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual health novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let us join our prayer today with this worldwide community of faithful who seek Mary's intercession and protection.
Over the years, I've met with people who are involved in a 12-step program and have come to do the fifth step with me. You may have heard of the big book, first published by Alcoholics Anonymous in 1939. It remains a classic pathway for those wishing to leave behind addictions of any kind. From the start, God is involved. But in the fifth step, addicts take responsibility and admit to God, to themselves, and to another person how they fell into the pit of addiction. I've sometimes been that other person for a recovering addict. Often, a person doing the fifth step will say something like, this is making me think about religion or about going to church, or they might say, I've started going to church. When I ask what it's about church that draws them, the most frequent answer is the music or the singing. And that always rings a bell for me. Addicts coming out of a tormented self to a new one want to soar. They want to enter into something bigger than themselves. Often they find themselves uplifted when they enter into the music of church life and liturgy. Catholic liturgical music is a keystone of how we worship, how we, in a certain way, leave ourselves and collectively come into a felt sense of the presence of God. Music touches the heart and the soul. It awakens something within us, addresses us in our inner selves. And that's an aspect of what Catholic liturgy aims to do as well. Liturgy is the official public prayer of the Church. It's the sacramental and ritual life of the Church, especially the celebration of the Eucharist. In the 1960s, the Catholic bishops of the world gathered at the Second Vatican Council called for a renewal and updating of the Roman Catholic liturgy. This led to a real awakening of Catholic people across the world as they became more actively involved in the liturgy as readers, ministers of communion, and parish music directors. The congregation ceased being silent watchers as they learned the responses and joined in the singing. Musicians and choir members came out of the woodwork and composers and lyricists developed a whole new repertoire of modern church music. In 2022, Pope Francis wrote the apostolic letter Desiderio Desideravi in order to renew our thinking and attitudes on the liturgical formation of the people of God. Desiderio Desideravi are Latin words from the Gospel of St. Luke which Jesus speaks as he takes his place at the table in the upper room. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Pope Francis suggests that what will revitalize the liturgy is a serious and vital liturgical formation. He further suggests that there are two aspects of that. One is formation for liturgy, which would involve the study of liturgy, its history, and the fundamental theological truth and principles that shape, form, and permeate our liturgy. The other is formation by the liturgy. This is the more interior, spiritual, and experiential aspect of liturgy that I want to focus on. It's what my fifth step friends were awakening to. I'm fortunate that even as a child, I was blessed with a fairly deep awareness of this interior spiritual aspect of our liturgy. And I've been even more blessed to find this interiority enhanced in my experience of the renewed liturgy that has unfolded since the Second Vatican Council. It's actually we ourselves who participate in the liturgy who need revitalizing. 
So appreciating the many aspects of liturgy that Vatican II formulated to enhance participation, it's now our turn, our moment to respond. We find this within us when we allow ourselves to feel deeply the history and the essence of the mystery in which we are immersed at liturgy. Jesus lived and died for us. He taught us a way to live that brings us fullness and joy here on earth and in the hereafter. We experience it again every time we participate in liturgy, and then we're sent forth to live as Jesus has taught us. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord, Obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wandered as your Son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us, so that we may welcome the Word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your Son healed the sick, Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health, and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins, Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen.
Blessed are those who weep, for one day they shall laugh. Through empathy, we experience not only the pain of others, but also the joy and laughter. Mary, mother of sorrows, mother of joy, mother of empathy, pray for us. I turn to Mary to help me better understand the spiritual practice of empathy, what I need from others, and what others I come across need from me. How could a God of love allow us to suffer so much? First, let me say that God loves us as we are suffering. God is right there with us as we are going through all of these things that cause us pain. Second, we feel this pain because we love. And because God loves us, He feels our pain too. Third, we experience pain so that we can have empathy to help others. We are not alone. Jesus weeps with us. He wept for his friend Lazarus, even though he knew he would rise again. Jesus, as a man, suffered, as all humans suffered, and more. Torture, ridicule, loss, and abandonment. His suffering is also his empathy. It is how he stays with us and all that we are suffering. When we have gone through a painful experience, we often recall that moment when we shared with someone else who is going through a similar situation. The ability to share this pain is a grace from God because it allows us to have empathy for the other person. It is more than just an understanding of the hopelessness, the feeling of being lost, overwhelmed, and angry. That pain we go through is part of God's plan. I know that sounds crazy, but it is true. If you didn't experience that pain, you wouldn't have the gift of empathy and you wouldn't be able to help others who have or will endure similar painful circumstances. God places those people in your lives so that you could help them. St. Teresa of Avila tells us that we are to be Christ's eyes as he looks with compassion on the world. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blessed all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. This gift of empathy is a beautiful gift that allows us to be the eyes of Christ that looks compassionately on the world and like Christ, feel the pain with others. When you find yourself in a place of suffering, don't push it away. Allow yourself to feel the pain. Grieve, cry, talk to someone about it and bring it to God. Ask God to help you through this. He might not always take whatever it is that causes the suffering away. He doesn't stop it, but he is right there with you and he has placed others in your life to help you through it as well. Blessed are those who weep, for one day they shall laugh. Through empathy, we experience not only the pain of others, but also the joy and laughter. Mary, mother of sorrows, mother of joy, mother of empathy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother of perpetual health. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, 
parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity and strength and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters, our brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, Thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. And thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors residences, apartments, and Catholic schools. Together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of all our people. Many of you have written us by email and by regular mail to let us know that you are praying with us and sometimes you let us know why you pray and for whom you pray. Your letters and emails are precious to us. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and each week we Redemptorists offer a special Mass of thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all your intentions. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with donations from all our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 25 years. Every donation, large and small, allows us to continue this ministry to you. Please help us if you can. Make your check payable to Devotions TV or go online to our website www.redemptress.ca or www.redemptress.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out regularly. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on Devotions TV, write or email us at the address on your screen. So now, following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary of Perpetual Help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Devotions TV in honor of our Mother Perpetual Help, produced by the Redemptors of Canada, on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptors TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptors TV. Tell your friends, help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our Mother Perpetual Help.